Thanks for joining us at Right On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the re-release of the Lindbergh Mad Maestro Scale Model Motorized Monster Kit. It's model number HL607 in the current catalog. This is a skill level 3 kit for ages 12 and up. And it comes with 29 plastic parts that are molded in orange styrene. It's got one strand of hair and 11 pieces for the electric motor. A cartograph decal sheet. The kit comes with easy to follow instruction sheets in three pages and a call out for the paint scheme on one page as well. But as you can see from my dancing maestro, I didn't exactly follow the instruction sheet and the color call outs. But that's the beauty of modeling because you can do it just the way you want. There are two ways to approach the construction of this kit. One would be to build it as a static model right out of the box, just using finishing techniques for a display shelf model. The other is to complete the circuits for the electric motor and make a dancing motorized kit for your shelf. I give Lindbergh and Round 2 a lot of credit for bringing out these old kits, and although they're not exactly what the modelers of today would expect, they're lots of fun. Additionally, Lindbergh has sought to include the great cartograph decals, and this kit is made in America. Now brace yourself for the motion model. You have to put the circuits together yourself. That's right. Back in the 60s when this kit was developed, every kid had a soldering iron because he was putting together wired uh, radios and circuits from all the magazines that were out at the time. So the best way to put this together is to break out one of those soldering irons in some rosin core solder. Now get ready and I'll show you exactly how to do it. First thing I did was snap the motor into the bracket and it has a deep plug so you can't get it wrong. Next insert the cam lobe onto the motor shaft but don't press it all the way up to the end. Leave a slight gap there. Now assemble the switch lever and contact by noting the orientation of the lever and putting one of the gra brass grommets through the back side. Then if you don't have a brass grommet tool, just use your hobby knife to splice it into four sections so that you can pin those over and make for the contact to stay there. Now just push those down with the back side of the hobby knife and your contact should look like this when you're done. Now note the orientation of the switch bracket and place a grommet through the back side of that and do the same thing to splice it and put it into place. Slide the lever into the housing through the uprised portion and then pin it in place with the plastic pin there. The white arrow here shows you where the keeper pin is positioned and the black arrow shows you the direction of the switch when it's activated. For those of you that are new to this, this is a soldering iron and some rosin core solder. You can find them at hardware stores, radio shacks and online. Okay, I do want to mention there is an alternative. You can try and strip enough wire back to twist the wires tightly to the contact points and to each other. Sometimes it works, but I don't recommend it. Here's what your circuit will look like when it's completed. But note there are two blue wires. Use the shorter one to connect to the switch and the motor side. Now strip back the insulation from about a half an inch from each end of the wires. You're going to follow the manufacturer's directions for the soldering iron. But remember, this thing is hot. It'll melt lead. Then you put the bare wire through the contact points and heat up the soldering iron until it will melt some solder onto the wire and therefore connect it to the contact. On the eyelets, you simply solder the wires onto the back side that has been spliced and peened over for a contact there. Now finish the circuit as you were shown in the original diagram there with all the wires connected to the switch and the contacts. Now move the wiring circuit over to the base and place the blades of the battery contacts into the slots provided there. Then get ready to position and glue the lever into place against the sidewall and through the outlet in the back. I used some super glue to mount that uh, switch bracket into place and I also used some to place the motor onto the four pegs and uh, put that into place there. The switch blade will protrude through the hole in the back and when it's raised in the up position the motor will engage. Well, that is, after the battery is installed, 
I used a wire tie here and tightened it up to keep the, mo the battery in place uh, so that it wouldn't fall out. With the circuit done, I started to work on some of the plastic pieces and painted them with a primer gray. With the primer gray base, I decided to add a little uh, flare to it by putting some uh, paint in between the stones. I used a craft paint with some soap and water in equal parts and mixed it up to paint in between those rocks. When it had dried, I used a, um, a wet damp cloth and wiped away anything that I didn't like. And where I had accidentally taken too much off, I simply reapplied a little bit more. This is the finished item. It's a simple but effective dais for our rock star maestro. This is the backbone, so to speak, that provides motion to the body parts when the base protrudes through down to the motor cam. We're going to assemble this by putting the two notches together there, the longer piece into the notch on the shorter piece, which are the arms. This is the front piece of the model, and I noticed this piece of flash on an injector pin here, denoted by that black arrow. If yours is too long, make sure you trim that so that it doesn't interfere with the backbone. Now take the short piece, uh, number 18, which is the leg, the static leg, and match it up with the arrows indicated here by the black diagonals. Glue that into place with some super glue, which is what I used for the entire model. Now just lay the entire backbone into the frontal section just like this. No glues required. Just make sure that the arm extensions stick out of those holes and the one for the neck is sticking through the front the leg of course into the round section at the base. Now match up the body halves by placing the back half onto the front half with the alignment pins there. It's a good fit and there's not much gap but uh, make sure that you don't pinch or trap any of the backbone portion. Well it's safe to say that the bane of figure modelers is the seam and this one is no exception. There's a seam the length of the sides all the way along but it's not too bad. Assemble the left and right arms with the end caps on the hands just like you did with the body half. Use a sandpaper stick and some progressively finer sandpaper to finish off the seams and make them as smooth as possible. Glue the upper and lower halves of the head assembly together at this time. Here are the pieces that are used for the assembly of the head and it includes the strand of hair that's wound around the top and the hat. But for right now we're just going to work on the, the upper skull uh, portion and in install the jaws on each side. You notice the uh, the baton that was pictured in the last picture. In the instructions, that's supposed to be inserted into the teeth of the uh, of the monster, but I elected to use the baton as his actual baton, so I omitted that and and we'll fill that little hole later. Also, the hat is shown here and it'll need to be uh, primered soon, but you can see the teeth have been installed at this point too. To give my monster a little more of an oafish look, I rounded off those sharp incisors that come with the kit. Now check over all the basic body parts and make sure that the seams are as minimal as they can be by sanding and scraping them down until they're smooth. I used some 3M automotive spot glazing putty, but you can use any modeling putty to apply to the seams, then sand them smooth for a nice smooth finish. Use progressively finer grits until the seam is all but gone. Around the base of the feet, you'll find just about the only parting line that has a, a significant amount of flash to it. The item on the right points out the parting line there with the arrow, and on the left, it's already been sanded smooth so that you can see the difference. Well, our model's coming together, but I noticed something odd about the feet. They're just stubs there, and even though the box art shows them covered with spats, they did not provide any spats in the decals, etc. So we have to make some modifications to those feet so that they look more normal. Take a close look here at the black circles where the feet meet the legs and you'll see what I mean. The first thing I did was taper the tops of those feet off so that they more closely conform to the size of the legs. Then I applied some modeling putty around the perimeters and finished those off smoothly as I could. Assemble the music stand by placing the post into the bag and gluing it together. Pull together all the parts that have been seam repaired and get them ready for primer. Give them a good even coat of primer that's compatible with your finished color paint. 
Now examine them for any defects that would show through the paint and smooth them out with some more finishing putty. Then give it a good even coat of your color of choice. I went with some Krylon orange just to match the original Mad Maestro look. After my Mad Maestro dried, I taped off his slacks or trousers so that I could paint those differently than the body. Here everything is uh, taped off with some low tack tape except for the trousers. I painted that with a few coats of flat white to match the hat that I'll make for him later. I taped off the sash and painted that a bright red color to match the band on his hat. So then I painted the hat flat white and the bow a bright red color and got some modeling tape out to make the band for the hat. Just stretch the tape around the hat and end it at the bow, trim it off there. Then clean up any mistakes that need to be done with some flat white. And you've got a nice looking hat for this fella. I hand painted some dark red around the eyes, the snout, and the lips to accentuate the head. I mixed some of the red craft paint, uh, soap and water mixture to accentuate the six pack on our monster model. Now paint the eyes white as or any color that you choose. I painted the outer circle of the iris uh, a bright blue and later on I'll paint the pupils black. I painted his teeth with a base coat of yellow and I also painted the eyeballs uh, with some red stripes in them to represent uh, veins. But I used some red craft flocking to uh, use on his stubble so I painted that a dark red as well and applied the a craft flocking with some white glue. Now I used some of the dark wash from MIG to provide a little bit of definition to his teeth by painting the cracks in between the teeth with that. You can also use some thinned down black paint. After you shake off the excess, the craft flocking looks just like real stubble on a monster. These are the cartograph decals that come with the kit. They're much improved over the originals, and there's quite a plethora of items to put on your monster. There are a lot of contours on the model, so it would really benefit if you use some decal setting solution to help them conform to the irregularities on the body. Now prepare the arms for attachment by making sure that there's a good gluing surface to put on the posts that are extending through his body cavity. I also painted the uh, toenails and fingernails with a base coat of interior green followed by some black wash and then finally some white highlight to give it a little sheen. At this point I also glued the body uh, to the stand, the dais there, by gluing the static foot onto the pegs that are provided and making sure that the motion foot uh, protruded through this uh, dais and into the bottom area where the motor will engage it. Attach the irons with some super glue and move the model over onto its side. Underneath the base you're going to put the toggle onto the foot uh, extension of the model and around the cam that's on the motor. The black arrow shows where the cam goes onto the foot extension and it straddles in between the uh, piece that you place there. Glue that piece into place lightly and make sure that it stays there. You might have to wiggle these around to make sure that they're loose enough to keep the model moving at all times. Now gather the hat, the hair, and the head for final assembly. Use a flame to fuse the end of the strand so that you can glue that to the base of the post on top of his head. Then wind it around until you get enough uh, there to look like hair. Now glue the hat into position on top of the post with the point facing forward. Now through the back of the head and up near the top, of course uh, underneath the hat, there's a receptacle for the post that's sticking out of his chest on the backbone. Just place the bobble head on that and, sh and she should be standing there loosely and, and looking in final form. The baton is basically white with a red tip and a wood handle. Just glue that into place on his right hand. The music stand is painted flat black. I've seen them chrome, but I've seen them black too. And a piece of scrolled music uh, with some scribbling on it to represent his favorite symphony was placed in front of him. You flip the switch and he is ready to commence. Looking every bit the mad maestro that we've come to know and love over the years, here he is again in fine form, ready to rock the band. 
This was a fun build. The parts fit together very well and everything works quite well especially considering it's a very old design. But this guy is in fine form and if you want to have a blast you can't help but laugh when you flip that switch and he conducts the orchestra. We hope you've enjoyed this Ride On Replicas step-by-step -step review. But so that you don't miss any future ones, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can find us on Facebook, and we also are on the web at www.writeonreplicas.com. Thanks.